welcome to this chapter 4 linear regression with one regressor in this chapter what we are going to discuss population regression function sample regression function how to estimate population regression function what is ordinary least square what does this least square means why should we not have outliers in our data and if there are outliers why OLS lead to biased results sampling distribution of OLS estimators these are main issues which we are going to discuss this is our first chapter in a course on introduction to econometrics from Stock and Watson I hope you are all familiar with probability and basic statistical inference I am not going to cover it at the moment in this course so this is my first lecture on introduction to econometrics linear regression with one regressor so and our fundamental question basic question is does class size reduction lead to improvement in test score we'll discuss California school uh, data used in this book introduction to econometrics by stock and watson what is estimation what is hypothesis testing how do we do confidence interval these things we'll discuss in this chapter as well as in chapter 5 next we'll discuss in chapter 6 multiple linear regression so if you want to uh, uh, get uh, more on concept of OLS estimators you can watch this video that what do we mean by OLS ordinary least square how does it make sum of squares of residuals minimum we'll discuss it at some other stage so what is our population regression function our population regression function is simply that test score is equal to beta naught plus student teacher ratio of class size what is beta 1 we'll focus on beta 1 slope coefficient will not focus on beta naught uh, in this chapter and will not focus on beta naught uh, a lot in this cross-sectional data so slope is basically rise over run how much increase in test score will happen due to an increase or decrease in sample size so this rise how much rise for this much run that is your slope this is measured by beta 1 if it is negative it will be like this so uh, uh, beta 1 basically measures impact of class size on test score on test score we don't know beta 1 we need to estimate this beta 1 and we know that there are many other factors which influence this y i test score so those factors effect is in ui so x is called regressor predictor explanatory variable independent variable y is called dependent variable predictant regressant response variable outcome variable so there are so many names to these variables beta naught is called intercept what's its interpretation why should we avoid its interpreting the way we uh, do it in mathematics what is slope beta 1 is your slope and u i are your errors what is difference between errors and residuals that we'll also discuss there is a difference in residuals and errors so you see this is our average regression line this is our average regression line and difference from this average regression line and actual y these black dots are your observed y values this difference is called residual which is our error at the moment from uh, uh, errors are some hypothetical thing we'll discuss it these are called errors so difference between the average value you have guessed and the observed value so this is your y hat this is your y so the difference between these two is called error we try to fit this line in such a way this blue line in such a way that sum of squares of 
errors is minimized since errors are unobserved we always get from sample uh, the, the, the sample errors you may call residuals so we say sum of squares of residuals as we minimize sum of squares from mean similarly in ordinary least square we try to make this square as least or this is called uh, this is called least square so we try to pick those values of beta 1 and beta 1 uh, beta naught and beta 1 which makes this sum of squares of residuals minimum sum of squares of errors minimum that is what has been uh, discussed in slide number three concept of OLS you can watch that video I'll uh, give the link in my this uh, this video as well so this is a scatter plot between test score and student teacher ratio in general what we observe from this scatter plot are from this exploratory analysis that there seems some sort of negative relationship between student teacher ratio and test score that is as class size increase that is on horizontal axis test score decrease so it seems a line like this one so should it be this one should it be this one or it should be this one so which line to fit the one which makes or where beta naught and beta 1 are chosen such that sum of squares of errors residuals is minimized that is those are called OLS, OLS estimators because those estimators basically make this difference between residuals and fitted values their uh, uh, minimum so this is ordinary least square basically tries to pick beta naught and beta 1 in such a way that this sum of squares of residual is minimized you can do its calculation that differentiate it with respect to beta naught with respect to beta 1 this square this square differentiate with respect to beta naught equal to 0 differentiate it with respect to beta no 1 equal to 0 then second order condition should be uh, the uh, second differential should be less than 0 that's mathematics which you have uh, uh, which you uh, might have already done here I am going to discuss in in more in you see uh, applied applied sense so beta 1 head is equal to sum of x i minus x bar y i minus y bar divided by sum of x i minus x bar square if i divide it by respective n minus 1 n this is called the upper term is called covariances and these are these will become variances so if we divide it by n minus 1 n minus 1 these will be called covariances so beta 1 hat is covariance between x and y divided by variance of x or if you simplify it it may be written uh, it was written earlier beta naught hat is equal to y bar minus beta 1 hat x bar our fitted line which is you see we don't have data on population so we we have to get data from sample and when we try to get data on sample and fit a line on sample data that's called now your residual these are called residuals errors is some sort of conceptual thing that's in back of your head that's not available errors always satisfy all the standard properties issue is always with residuals so residuals is equal to yi minus yi hat beta naught hat and beta 1 hat are those values which make sum of squares of residuals minimum so you can see that if you pick any two values other than 698.9 and minus 2.28 your sum of squares of residuals will be more than what you get by picking these two values this is called ordinary least square here what do we say that beta 1 slope coefficient is minus 2.28 that as class size increase by 1 test score 
डिक्रीज बाई माइनस टू पॉइंट टू एट और एस क्लास साइज डिक्रीज बाई वन दैट इज टेस्ट स्कोर विल इंप्रूव बाई टू पॉइंट टू एट माइनस इंटू माइनस प्लस so here you see we we see the, uh, what is the interpretation of slope but what will be average test test score when class size is 0 what do we say 9 698 mathematically it's okay but do we have ever observed class size of 0 since we haven't observed class size 0 so we should not make any statement about test score for zero class size because we have never ever observed this data so we should not make any statement about predicted where we don't have predictor weight is function of height but have we ever observed height equal to zero so we don't have any person anything with height equal to 0 so we should not predict where we don't have predictor that's why we say that avoid interpreting intercept and that is my video interpretation of the intercept you can watch this video from uh, uh, this this playlist econometric sub practical approach interpreting the intercept these are these are short clips here i am trying to make comprehensive ones so that's what we have uh, discussed here what do we see that if class size is 19 point something what will be your guess what will be your fitted uh, uh, what will be your fitted uh, what will be your estimated value of test score what do we get from mathematical uh, from simple algebraic calculation 650 Four. What will be your uh, the actual value? That will be six fifty seven point eight. The difference between this one and this one is called residuals. Why we fit always average value? Because if I ask you, okay, let's play a game that I'll pay you fifty dollar if your guess is within uh, uh, one point minus one point or plus one point lower than actual value. No, you see. Let's say we have we are given a value of twenty. If you guess this one, and actual value is this one, you will miss by a huge margin, and you have to pay a good amount of money to me. And if you guess this one, and actual value is this one, again the same. But whenever I give you class size twenty, and if you guess on a, this test line, so you will be clo close to these these points. then by guessing some individual value so what do we see we always average these vertical values against a given x values so when we average its average is here its average is here its average so we pass a line through these averages this is called average regression line or this is called regression line so whenever you are given data if you don't know any particular criteria for guessing average will be your best guess and regression is average line if we run through stata i'll do it through r i have already uploaded and given the link for running all this in r studio and i have given all the codes so you can you can use those codes and in stata i have a video that how you can do this what is the meaning of this robust that i will explain in my next video on chapter 5 heteroscedastic robust standard errors so you can run these codes until and unless you run it you make scatter plot you will not enjoy meyer of fit so we are going to discuss some terminology here r square what is r square this is fraction of variance of y that is explained by x it is a unitless meyer it's between 0 and 1 so long as intercept is included so r square is basically how much variation in y is explained by x smaller the variation it means we cannot predict better the dependent variable but more than that saying anything more than that about r square that's that's be careful we'll explain it in chapter 6 multiple linear regression that high r square low r square 
that that doesn't mean much for us in having analysis when we do when we are studying behavior relationship structural relationship among the variables standard error of the regression measures the spread around the regression line that was your regression line these these points that measure that spread around regression line is measured by standard error or you can say it is roughly equal to the size of a residual so y i is equal to we decompose observed value into two parts y i is equal to your explained fitted systematic part plus random part and when we take its uh, mean y bar y hat bar u hat bar and we do subtraction and little mathematics we'll have total sum of squares explained sum of squares residual sum of squares so that is what we have done sum of y i minus y bar square similarly y i hat minus y i hat bar square similarly plus sum of u i hat minus u hat bar to so u hat bar is always zero so u u i hat square so this is this one is residual sum of squares this is explained this is total sum of squares and r square is equal to uh, explained sum of squares divided by total sum of squares since total sum of squares is equal to explained sum of squares plus residual sum of squares so residual sum of squares will be equal to total sum of squares minus explained sum of squares so this can also be written as 1 minus residual sum of squares divided by total sum of squares r square is 0 if there is no variation in y due to x r square is 1 if there is complete variation in, uh, explained in y due to x usually r square is between 0 and 1 for regression with a single regressor r square the square of the correlation if you have only two variables then r x y and its square its square is the same as r square but it's not true if you have more than two variables standard error of regression is u i minus u hat bar u hat bar is always zero so sum of u i hat square divided by n minus two root mean square error so this is square sum of squares error this is when you take its uh, mean this is uh, mean square error and then you take its root this is root mean square error difference between root mean square error and standard error is degree of freedom so if n is small n minus 1 over n minus 2 and 1 over n will be different but if n is very large then there will not be much difference so standard error of regression and root mean square error will be very close to each other as I mentioned the standard okay why do we divide it by n minus 2 instead of n we see that we have estimated beta naught hat actual value of beta naught is not available beta 1 hat actual value of beta 1 is unknown and when we have calculated ui hat we have calculated it yi minus beta naught hat minus beta 1 hat xi since we have used two estimators here instead of their actual value so two degree of freedom is lost that is the concept we divide it by n minus 2 okay fine so far so good i hope so r square is 0 0.05 it means five percent of the variation in test score is explained by uh, uh, class size standard error of regression 18.6 it means whatever you are going to predict there will be plus minus two standard errors 37 37 points of uh, your guess may be uh, above or below which is a very large value so smaller the standard error better your guesses more precise your results are that we have covered what is OLS estimators what is sample regression function how do we estimate beta 1 beta naught and now we are going to discuss what are the assumptions required for this OLS estimator this is slightly a different text and it has discussed these assumptions in its in a more simple 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 form 
and uh, has built uh, keep on building up these assumptions rather than l listing all these assumptions at one place so we are going to discuss these three assumptions here expected value of u given x it means x and u are independent x does not contain any information from which you can predict y so u is random if u is not random it means there is some systematic error in this and we need to uh, reformulate model we'll discuss it in multiple linear regression this implies that beta 1 hat is unbiased unbiased means that if we take a large number of samples each sample will get beta 1 hat then beta 1 hat then beta 1 hat and if we take their average that will be equal to population mean uh, th th that will be equal to beta 1 that's concept of unbiasedness unbiasedness concept is basically uh, a statistical concept it has not much practical utility in economics uh, and observational data because mostly we have one sample observed we don't know whether it will get one beta one hat whether it's lower biased upper biased unbiased we don't know x and y are iid so long as we are not talking about time series data we are talking about observational cross-sectional data we'll assume that x and y are i iid independently identically distributed independence means there is no that is future uh, uh, you cannot predict one from the other if you cannot predict future from the past it means independence if you uh, uh, can do that that's called and it's time series data it's it's really helpful but in cross-sectional data usually my blood pressure has nothing to do with your blood pressure that's it means that uh, this is independent data and identically distributed if we have male and female two uh, 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 in class both in class then it means you don't have homogeneity so homoscedastic means identically distributed heteroscedasticity means they are not identically distributed more on this in coming lectures large outliers are rare usually this assumption is not listed in many of many uh, uh, of the uh, econometrics uh, textbooks so the, the large outliers are rare if there is an outlier that will lead to biasness in OLS estimator we'll discuss in a short while that how does it uh, leads to biasness it basically it means you should have a finite kurtosis you should have you should not have very huge value of kurtosis finite fourth moment so in this case you have identically distributed data that is you if class size is 15 20 25 you have more or less same distribution and that uh, blue line passes through average so it, it's okay we will discuss in chapter 5 that what hap what happens if there is heteroscedasticity ideal situation which is not available in most of the observational data and in economics that is you should have randomized controlled trials if we have a class of size 100 we have 50 students in one class 50 students in another class are 33 in one 33 in another 34 in another and we try some strategy of large class size small class size or teaching them by one tool teaching by another tool teaching by this online math, uh, mechanism and then what we see that what does uh, this teaching methodology uh, have uh, how does this teaching methodology impact their test score but usually it's not the case so what do we have to do we we just observe data we collect data that how, uh, when you have small class size when you have large class size so we just observe this but in randomized control trials if we have this then the other factors become independent of your explanatory variable that's the main advantage of randomized control trials but at the moment that's that's not our topic we are dealing with observational data so second assumption so if you have uh, th uh, th this first assumption then it means u given x is zero that is x is not helpful in predicting y second assumption i have 
explained it in detail. Uh, fourth assumption, is, third assumption, this is infinity, this is infinity. Third assumption, that is large outliers are unlikely. If there are large outliers, then your OLS estimators will be highly biased. It Then you should go for least absolute deviation method. That will also have discussion at some stage. Okay, let's go, go. let's go. If I ask you the fetal line on these black dots, most of you will think, okay, this seems a good line because it passes through these black dots very closely. If we ignore this line, if, if we ignore this outlier, this seems perfect. Okay, fine. Absolutely no issue. But as I mentioned that what is OLS? OLS basically minimizes sum of squares of residuals. If we fit this line, Basically, distance between this point and this point is u. This u and it's a very large value of u and when we take its square, it becomes a very large value. It becomes a very large value. So, in order to minimize sum of squares of residuals, what happens that this point pulls this line towards itself and it makes uh, the line slightly far away from these points. So the line you will fit in presence of outlier will be this one. Please note down that if there is typographical error or some such type of, or some, uh, some error like this, it's okay. Ignore that outlier, make a correction, but otherwise don't omit outliers. Aeroplane journey is safe if we exclude uh, uh, airplane crashes. That's 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 nonsense. Uh, financial investment is very safe if we ignore all financial market uh, clashes. So we cannot ignore outliers. That's that's another uh, uh, topic for another place. The, um, almost the last point: sampling distribution of the OLS estimators. If y i is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x1 i plus ui if ui is normal y is a linear function of normal so y is normally distributed if y is normally distributed beta 1 hat is a linear function of y so beta 1 is also normally distributed so it's okay so long as ui is normally distributed even if ui is not normally distributed we don't have any uh, serious issue why do we, we don't have any serious issue? Because you see, okay, the, these are the things which you have already uh, well familiar with probability and statistical inference. You see, this is sum. This is sum. So from central limit theorem, we know that even if original values, y, r, u, r, these are not normally distributed, the distribution of sum or distribution of means that is normally distributed. So for large sample, we don't have any issue here. Okay, so you see this is yi, this is uh, its mean and yi minus y, uh, uh, subtract second equation from the first, you will have this one and then we substitute yi minus y bar by here this value and what do we get? that sum of xi minus x bar and xi minus x bar into ui minus u bar. So this is sum of xi minus x bar square. This is xi minus x bar square. So this will cancel out and we take this beta one on this side equation, uh, left hand side and we are left with this one. So in many textbooks, it's written that X are pre-assumed fixed values, which we are not assuming. We are assuming that X are random variables. So if X are random, and then you cannot say, expect, uh, you, uh, if, uh, then you cannot take X outside expectation and you just apply expectation on UI and you say expected value of UI is zero. Expected value of UI equal to zero means X is fixed. What we have assumed that expected value of ui given x equal to zero. 
so you have to do little mathematics it's given in appendix um, uh, chapter 4 and you will you will do little algebra and you will come up with this uh, result beta 1 hat is equal to this one now you have to apply expectation on it when you apply expectation on it you have law of iterative expectations and this this line is basically given that this line is given that this line is given that so we say uh, this is in uh, square bracket given that x1 x2 and from this appendix you you will see with little algebra that this is equal to zero so expected value of u given x equal to zero means expected value of beta 1 hat minus beta 1 equal to 0 which means this is this will be equal to beta 1 which means OLS estimator will be unbiased one but what is unbiasedness that if you take so many samples you take a large number of samples every time you will have a beta 1 hat every and then when you take its average the average will be almost equal to beta 1 so practically uh, this unbiasedness is not of much utility for us okay fine final final just we are going to talk about variance and one very important point that why sufficient variation in x is required so please be with me just just uh, just five four uh, five six more slides so if you to do this uh, calculation this little algebra you write this whole new i and beta 1 hat equal to this one and now you apply variance so what will be variance of beta 1 hat with this will be equal to variance of this one and this will be equal to variance of new divided by n sigma square n so variance of this one divided by sigma 4 x sigma 4 x means finite fourth moment if it's a very large value we will have a trouble if it's a very small value again we will have a trouble how I'll, I'll explain in a short while so what is sampling distribution of OLS estimator as I explained that sampling distribution of OLS estimator is normally distributed for large sample and for small sample if ui is normally distributed then yi is linear function of ui and beta 1 hat is a linear function of yi so any linear transformation of a normal random variable is normal normal so beta 1 hat will be normally distributed with mean beta 1 and standard error or variance this one why do we need this uh, this uh, distribution for statistical inference when do we say that beta 1 hat plus 1.96 standard error of beta 1 so why do we say that it is we are 95 percent confidence interval because we assume that beta 1 hat is normally distributed fine now i am going to make very important point the larger the variance of x the smaller the variance of beta 1 hat so if you increase spread in x means if x has sufficient variation if you are taking people with if, uh, 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 people with the having uh, large variation in their heights it's better to predict it's easy to predict the weight I I, I I am going to make it uh, further uh, clear uh, from this uh, point you see okay and this graph I have already uh, uploaded our codes to make this graph so please watch those and uh, uh, replicate that if no if I ask you that fit a line from these blue points If I ask you fit a line from these points, okay, please, please think. Fine. If I ask you to fit a line from this whole whole data, you all more or less like this way. So it means when you have small variation in X there is little to predict y because you are trying to predict y from predictor if predictor don't have uh, predictor does not have much variation in it it's difficult to predict y 
if you have all people in your sample having income let's say fifty thousand dollar per year or fifty one thousand dollar or fifty two thousand fifty five thousand it's very difficult to predict their consumption behavior as compared to if you have people in your sample who have thirty thousand dollar to eighty thousand dollar per annum uh, income so smaller the variation in x difficult uh, more difficult it is to predict y so large variation in x is always desirable i give another example if we are trying to predict money demand or output response from interest rate and in interest rate you have just interest rate somewhere between 4.5 and 5.5 you don't you have never ever observed what will happen if interest rate goes to 9% or interest rate goes to 2% you can't comment a lot that if it's if we vary interest rate by a large magni uh, by this magnitude this will happen because you you have always observed more or less interest rate equal to 5% so please larger the variation in x better the prediction in y so that's that's what is uh, i have explained that beta 1 hat is unbiased estimator its variance is uh, uh, directly in uh, proportion to inversely proportional to n larger the n smaller the variance and uh, greater the variation in x smaller the standard error of beta 1 and uh, the, the, it's normally distributed by central limit theorem and that's uh, what we have discussed so far how to do this testing of hypothesis statistical inference by using california school data that will be explained in chapter 5 and we see there are so many other variables which may influence your test score beside your class size that will be explained in chapter 6 multiple linear regression thank you for watching take care